All right, we're going to go ahead and start making a board. So to make the board, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my polygon cube primitive. I'm going to size this up appropriately over here in my attribute editor. I'm going to go to polycube1, which is the main sizable attribute for this object or scalable attribute. We'll start with my width. I'm going to crank this up to four. Now I'll come to depth. Let's make this 24. I'm going to add some divisions so that we can get some details here. So in the width, I'm going to say three. And in depth, three. All right. Now, any other divisions that we need to make to this, we can make with our multi-cut tool at a later date. All right, click in here, rotate myself around, and I'm going to pull myself out to vertex mode. And I'm just going to start making some small adjustments to the overall form of this. So I can start looking at the um, outline or the profile of my shape. Transform some of these. Just put a little bit of uh, twist into the board. Make it look a touch more organic. Maybe scale these in a touch. The overall shape of your board is up to you. I would just encourage you to look at some real boards, you know, get some real life examples of some things so that you can see what adjustments to make to things to make them look more realistic. Even if you're choosing a cartoon type style, um, there's a lot to be gleaned from real life examples. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put in the wood grain right here. So I'm going to select my edges. I'm going to double click and then hold shift and double click again. It's going to select the entire edge loop. All right. I come over here to my modeling toolkit, go to bevel, and then I'm going to move my fraction down to 0.1 and my segments up to 2. All right. Come in here, I'm going to grab, double clicking my center lines, my center loops again, hold shift, double click again. I'm going to scale this, take myself out to my front view. scale it down on the Y just a little bit so I have a good indentation. And scale it on the Z just a touch. Alright. Deselect that. Nice. Alright. I'm going to grab all my outer edges, hold and shift, double check. Make sure I've got all my corners. All right, from here, I'll go ahead and bevel once again. And I'm going to bring my fraction down 0.2. Looks pretty nice. Kind of walks the line between semi-realistic and cartoon at this point. Alright, from 
here, I'm going to go into my faces, and I'm going to start pushing and pulling these faces around just a little bit, scale them up, scale them down, just to change up the overall profile, make it a little bit more organic, just based on the art style that I'm looking for. Grab this guy and pull him out just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and add some cupping here to the board so it looks a little more weathered. Grab those and move them down a bit in the y-axis. Grab the side here. Perhaps I scale this down, just a touch. And vertex mode. I'm going to scale this side down here a little bit as well. Do the same thing on this side. All I'm trying to do is change the overall dimensions of this just a bit so that it's more believable in the real world. If all we did was stick out a plain, boring old rectangle in the world, yeah, you could slap a texture on it and it'll be believable as a brand new board straight from the store. But we're trying to sell a story here, right? And part of your story is told the objects you put in your world, right? The weathering or the age of each object, the story of each object, tells the viewer of your world a little bit about the conditions, the world's history. everything's perfectly clean and your world comes from a place of order. Things are a little more grungy, things are a little more worn, and you get an idea, a feel for things that are going on in that world. And it's going to be a whole different feel for the clean world than it will be for the grungy world. So whenever you're doing this kind of work, it's important to make sure that you understand what kind of world you're designing for. So you need to have a pretty clear vision. And that's where when design documents um, comes into play, concept art, all these things, incredibly important part of world building. Without those, everything starts to look the same, or at very least disjointed. One second.